Hey, safe diggers, this is the RD7100 startup video. If you're watching this video, hopefully you've purchased one of these beauties. This is the simpler form of the radio detection unit. Comes with, well, all together about five, six frequencies, power mode, radio mode, uh, but it's simple to use. Everything's pretty much automated on it. I'm gonna show you how to hook up here real quick. I have the transmitter in the nice little transmitter bag, but I will pull it out real quick and kind of show you what we have going on here. And so when you get started with your locator, you want to unpack the bottom tray because that's where you're going to find your direct connect leads. And you're going to find your ground rod and an extra 20 foot extension wire uh, to get your ground out further away from where you're locating. We're hooking onto a tracer wire for a gas line here. And so I'm just going to pack it back into my bag here and plug it in. And I'm going to use well, we'll just use 8 kilohertz, but your basic frequencies are found on the screen of the transmitter here. Um, what I've done is plugged in the direct connect leads to the front of the unit. I've put the black lead here to a ground rod behind me. You always want to try to get it around a 90 degree angle from what you're locating. Just get it away from what you're locating so you don't interfere with the locate. And then I have the red lead hooked on to the wire over here. And so our frequencies are found on the left side of the unit. And so I'm going to choose my frequency. Um, this uh, tracer wire of 512 hertz is going to work really well. It's going to go the furthest distance. 8 kilohertz works good too if the other end of the tracer wire is not grounded. But uh, for most cases, 512 will have less bleed off. And so um, you have a third frequency as well in here, which is 33 kilohertz. But to choose your frequencies, you just easily hit the F key, which stands for frequency, and get to the one you want. You also have a 65 kilohertz, but that should only be used when you're doing the induction method. That's when you unplug the cables and place the box over the top of the utility that you want to locate. And as you can see, the animation here on the screen is showing that it's throwing signal underneath the box now. It's trying to jump signal from this box to whatever's underneath you. And you got to use a higher frequency to do that because higher frequencies bleed easier. And that's what you're trying to do in this circumstance is bleed signal into the line. It's always better to hook up direct though. Hooking up direct will allow you to use a much lower frequency and it's going to go a lot further because you're gonna get a lot more power out onto the line. And the power rating is right here on the right side of the screen. And so I'm gonna go back to, let's go to eight kilohertz here. And you can see I'm on one bar of output. The output is controlled by these two arrows up and down. And one bar should always give you about five milliamps. If you're not getting milliamps and you're not getting volts, it's because you don't have the power turned up. You can see I got zero bars of power right now and I got zero volts, zero milliamps. If you turn it up to one bar and you get zero milliamps and you're getting maybe 29 volts, it's probably because your ground rod isn't all the way in or your, whatever you're connected to to do your locate is not good. I'm just gonna unplug the cable over here real quick from the wire and you can see I now have 30 volts it's kicked it in, uh, kicked in extra voltage to try to substitute for the lack of continuity on the wire, and I have zero milliamps. Zero milliamps means you're not gonna get anything. You're not going to pick up a signal with the receiver at all. We want milliamps to go down that line because that's what we're using to locate. And so five milliamps is enough to do probably on this trace wire, it will go a city block. If you're on a cast iron pipe, you're gonna probably go about 100 feet. And so I'm going to increase that, whoops, Increase that by hitting the up arrow here to two bars. Two bars should give you 20 milliamps. That's enough to, on a tracer wire, to go probably a mile. On cast iron, you will probably go about th uh, three to 500 feet. And if I go to four bars, I will get about 100 milliamps. And on tracer wire, that should go probably three miles for you. And on cast iron, you should maybe get a block worth of locating done. And then if I crank it all the way up, it's gonna to try to go to 500. It won't get there because the resistance of the line won't allow it to, and the resistance of the ground won't allow it to as well. All your signal's doing, all these milliamps are doing is going down that wire, returning back through the ground to get to the ground rod over here behind us. And it wants to complete the circuit. It's going the path of least resistance. And so when you go higher in your frequency, those milliamps kind of go all over the place to try to complete that circuit. When you stay low in your frequencies, we will get more of this 132 milliamps 
to travel the direction we want it to go. And so hooking up in the proper spot is important because the lower frequencies will stay on that path. They won't bleed off. And so on this wire, it's probably best to use 512 hertz. Um, but if the other end of the wire is not connected, 8 kilohertz is going to give you more milliamps. So we'll see the difference in milliamps here. We had 120, 132 milliamps on 8. We'll go down to 512. I'm just pushing the F key to change frequencies here. And we will have less milliamps. 128 because 512 is having a little harder time traveling down this wire more than likely the other end of the wire is not grounded even though it's probably about two miles away and so if you're staying close in proximity to the transmitter on your locate you only need one bar of output if you're going to probably uh, locate more than one yard uh, go and get into the neighbor's yard you would probably want two bars of output if you're going to locate a whole city block Three, blo uh, three bars will do that, and then if you're going to locate, try to locate beyond that, you want to maybe go up to four. But by staying lower in your power level, you're not going to bleed off as much, and you're going to conserve battery life. Your battery life is up here in the left-hand corner, and so you can see we have two bars of battery life, about 66% left of our battery. And um, this runs off of alkaline batteries and eight alkalines, but you can get the uh, lithium ion rechargeable if you want, which will last a lot longer. It lasts about 10 times longer than alkalines and recharges over 700 times. And so uh, the up down arrows control your output. F key changes your frequency. I'm gonna go to eight kilohertz. I got two bars of output. I got 20 milliamps. The V key, all that does is change you from milliamps two ohms and so if you think you have a break on the wire you can ohm it out and see if there's a, a, a high resistance on there uh, here we don't have too bad a resistance and so um, that's kind of used also to verify what frequency you want to use when there's high resistance you're going to have to go a little higher in your frequency but we're good here and i'm going to use eight and so with the receiver the first thing i do is match up my frequency turn it on and then match up my frequency my frequencies are found on the bottom left hand corner I'm on 33 right now, so I'll hit the same button, the F key for frequency, to get to 8. It's just like a radio station. You have a transmitter transmitting on a channel. you got to tune to that channel in order to pick up, pick up the broadcast. And so I'm on 8 kilohertz right now, and then I will start my locate a good 10 or 20 foot away from what I'm hooked to right here. And normally, if you don't know what direction this line goes, you would make yourself a nice circle with the back of this receiver always pointing to where you're hooked up. And as you're walking that circle, you're going to see the numbers go up and down. When I start my locate, I always start with my gain level. My sensitivity level of the antennas is found on the left side here. And I start with that around 70%, which it is right now. 70% should be more than enough to pick up your locate and now as I go left and right you can see my numbers going up and down but the arrows also help guide you left and right numbers are always the most accurate way to locate but the arrows um, on guidance mode here it does pretty darn good as well but you can see arrows getting smaller as I get over the line numbers getting larger as I get over the line they are both telling me it's right there and my depth reading will show up when I get close to the line as well five foot two inches deep to verify if that depth is accurate or not, we can lift it up off the ground exactly a foot. And when you lift it up a foot, we should add exactly a foot to our depth reading. And right there it's saying six foot, two inches deep. And so if it adds exactly a foot to your depth as you lift it up a foot, you can ver that verifies your, your, your depth reading is probably within the inch. And your locate is also accurate. Our milliamp reading is found on the left side. Right now we're pushing out 20 milliamps and we're picking up 12 out of those 20. That's another verification that you're on the right line. If that was only saying two milliamps, it could be possibly a telephone line or something else that we've bled off to, we've bled two milliamps onto. And so you want that to get relatively close to what the transmitter's pushing out. So if we had two signals out here, if we were picking up a line here and we were picking up a line over here, the best thing to do is measure your milliamps on both of them. Whichever one reads higher in your milliamps is your target line. That's the one you want to probably paint out. And so lots of things are going on on the screen on here, but they're all working automatically. You have your current measurement. You have your depth measurement. You have your compass telling you what direction the line's going. 
And so that's magnetizing to your magnetic field that you're putting on the line. That's what the current's doing. It's creating a magnetic field and that's what you're locating. And so the arrows will tell you to go left and right. The numbers will tell you where the highest response is, but so are the bar graph up on the top. You can see the bar going up and down and wherever it gets its highest response, it saves a little tick mark, a little line. And when you see that line show up, just go back to it and you should be pretty close over the line. You can also just look for your shallowest depth reading. You can see I have a five foot three inch reading right there. And then you see how it gets deeper as I get off to the side and eventually it just disappears. So wherever you get your shallowest reading when you're going left and right, which is right about there, five foot three, that should be directly up and down from the line. So five foot six, when I get too far, right about there's five foot three. So pretty simple. Now I will go ahead and just continue my locate. As I continue my locate and get further away from the transmitter, I'm going to lose current on my screen here. My signal is going to get weaker. And when my signal gets weaker, my numbers aren't going to go as high on the screen. And when, when you need to increase the sensitivity of the antennas, just hit the up arrow on here. Just increase it. So now I'm at about a 75 instead of a 70. And you can see as I'm increasing it, my numbers will go higher on the center of the screen. So you can run it as high as you want, just as long as you don't hit 99.9. .9. Once you hit 99.9, .9, your scale doesn't go any higher, so it's hard to see where it's exactly peaking out. So you just want to leave it below 99.9, .9, usually around the 50 percentile range is where I like to keep it. And it automatically goes there. I don't know if you saw that, but when I was at 99.9, .9, all I did was hit the down arrow once, and it automatically adjusts to 50 percentile range. And now I can see exactly where the peak response and the null response is right there. A couple of other things on the locator. Um, you have an antenna configuration. That's your last button on the right side. And that chooses how you want the antenna response to be. The first one is your peak response. That's the big hill icon. And that's a very accurate response. That's also a very quick response. You can see it's going up and down. One thing it doesn't have is the arrows but sometimes the arrows don't locate as well as this response here. It's a good one to get used to. It's also uh, very quick uh, in the audio response range. So when you get used to the audio response in this locate antenna response mode, you're gonna become a real quick locator. You won't have to watch the screen so much. Now, if I push this button, it's going to go to a peak and a null response. That's what that icon there is. It kind of looks like a spider with only four legs. But that adds arrows to your peak response. Same thing, you're just looking for your peak response, but it adds arrows to help guide you left and right. Also a very good response. This is called guidance mode, this next one. It's kind of a downward hill with a, a top on it. And what this does is um, control the sensitivity level for you. So you virtually have to hit no buttons in guidance mode. All you do is follow the high, where you get the highest number, and you can see it has a little shadow effect up on the top. That shadow is emulating the cable or pipe, and you get that to the center of the screen, you should be over the line. You get your depth reading still automatically, current reading, compass, everything's there automatically. If I hit the up-down arrows, they don't do anything because they are controlled automatically in this mode. So it's kind of a nice uh, uh, cruise control in the locator. It, uh, that's what I call that mode. And then we go back to peak mode again. And so kind of what you want to get used to when you're in that guidance mode, it nulls out or you get no audio when you're over it, which is the direct opposite of peak mode where you get audio when you're over it. So it's whatever, the, whatever you like. Uh, peak mode I find is faster, a uh, much quicker uh, response than the guidance mode. But for people that are just getting used to the machine, guidance mode is probably a little easier to get used to when you're starting out. Now this unit runs off of two D-cell batteries. The battery icon is on the left of the screen here. You can get rechargeables. A lithium ion um, will go in here and it will have a charging point on the outside so you don't have to open it to charge it. And then on the front here, you have a headphone jack and this is an external antenna jack. Uh, you can plug in, if you got the PL model, it does fault finding so you can plug in an A-frame for fault locating on wires. Uh, you can also uh, get a submersible antenna a stethoscope and other accessories for this. And so that's the RD7100 series. If you want to watch other videos on this, uh, you'll always find uh, the uh, videos on our website, subsurfacesolutions.com. And inside the battery compartment for our customers, we normally always have that listed, uh, our website listed and our telephone number listed right there. So you can call us with any questions at any time. So thanks, Safe Diggers. If you have questions, give me a holler.